Bluecat uh, DNS and GCP is simple to configure, allowing network teams to reduce time to deploy DDI changes. Let's get started on DNS GCP configuration. First, you're going to the IPS space tab and let's create a block first. So block are basically parent containers of IP, net, IP networks. Access rights, deployment options at the block level, if you set them, they will be inherited by child blocks and networks. So I'm going to create a slash 12 block. I'm gonna put the put a name, lab, and then you can put location if you want to, but I'm gonna ignore it. And I added my block. Now let's create a network. I'm gonna create a slash slash. I'm gonna create a slash 16 network. Same thing like a block, you can put a name. I'm gonna put a name. Um, So we have created block and then under the block, we have created network. I'm gonna go back to my block level and I'm gonna try to add slash 20 network just to show the referential integrity of our environment. So basically once I click add, it's not gonna be added. Exactly. So because there's a conflict, if you're trying to add a network that's in a conflict, or if it's out of the, uh, the range, to keep the referential integrity of the environment, it will not allow you to add it. So I'm going to cancel it. Now I'm going to add JCP client option. So once you click on the display sign, you can have, you can add DCB client option, server option, vendor option, but keep in mind for vendor options, you have to create the vendor first. So because there are so many vendors, I'm not gonna uh, create any specific vendor. I'm gonna first, I'm gonna create DHCP client option. And you can, you can select a whole bunch of options you have but let's keep the first one, the default one, time offset. And time offset actually specifies the time that you're offsetting from Greenwich mean time for your DCP clients. And I'm gonna, let's say, just put one hour. You can change it, you can adjust it, depends on your need. And now I have added my DCP client option. Now I'm going to create DHCP server options in the same way. So you, instead of selecting DHCP client option, I'm gonna se select DHCP service option. Let's keep the default one, which is uh, default list time. So I'm gonna keep the default list time 24 hours. So I have added default list time as my DHCP service option. Now you can add your DNS option from here or from your DNS tab, right there, DNS tab. Let's, I'm gonna add it here, DNS option. And to add the DNS, DNS option, I'm gonna add allow dynamic updates. Again, you can add any of these options uh, depends on your requirements, your environment. Uh, you, can, you can add allow notify, query, um, update forwarding, but I'm gonna just keep the default one, dynamic updates. And of course you have to put the, um, the IP address uh, that you're trying to allow dynam dynamic updates to. So once you add it, it will be here and click add. And then I have added now DHCP client option, service option, and DNS option. So one of the options that customer find it useful 
you can select if you want to have a tree view or you want to have a table view. So currently I have table view. I'm gonna change it to tree view. So in a tree view, it helps you to see how your IP space are organized. You have a better picture in terms of structure of your IP space. So I'm gonna go back to the table view. So one of the things customer finds very useful to see the network or IP space utilization. For example, in, the, in my first block, you can see that I have used 1% of my entire IP space and 99% free. If you have, let's say 50% capacity and then it will show 50% and 50%. Now let's go to the DNS tab. So we are, in, we are in the DNS tab and I'm going to create a DNS view first. DNS view is basically is a container or parent object for DNS zones. You have to create DNS view for creating DNS zones. So let's create a DNS zone. And I'm gonna create example.com and you can check the deployable or you can skip it. If it's good to uncheck it, if you are staging your, uh, your zones, but if you have to deploy it, you should check it, but I, I'm not going to deploy it for now. So I'm going to keep it unchecked. And we have the zone.com zone. Now I'm going to add a host record to example.com. Click host record. And let's say I'm gonna call it host1.example.com. And obviously you have to link your host records to an IP address. And I'm going to use 172.16.0.2 to map my host records to my IP, to the IP address. So I have mapped my host record to the IP address. There are a couple of options. By default, reverse record is selected and I'm gonna keep it. If you want, you can override your TTL, but I'm gonna skip it and add it. So that's how you configure BlueCat's DNS DC configuration. Learn more at bluecatnetworks.com.